If we can find a diagonalization of a matrix, we can easily compute high powers of a matrix. But how can we find such a diagonalization? Can we find a diagonalization for every square matrix A? We'll see the answer to both questions in this video. Let's look at it for 2 by 2 matrices, but because later on we will have to write down something explicitly, so it goes the same for bigger matrices, but just to keep the notation uh, uh, limited, we use a 2 by 2 matrix. Question is, can we find a matrix P, invertible, and a matrix D, such that A equals P times D times P inverse, or A times P equals P times D? with invertible matrix P. So given the matrix A, can we find such a P and D, and how can we find them? Well, if D is a diagonal matrix, with values A and B the diagonal, let's just calculate for any matrix D the eigenvalues. So we compute the determinant of A minus lambda times B minus lambda over here, product of A minus lambda times B minus lambda, so the eigenvalues are uh, when this is zero, so lambda 1 equals A, lambda 2 equals B. So for any diagonal matrix, the eigenvalues are just the numbers on the diagonal. If I have a matrix A and I am looking for a matrix D such that A is similar to this D, we know that the eigenvalues of A and D have to be the same because they are similar. Similar matrices have the same eigenvalues. So if I want to find a matrix D which is similar to A, given A I want to find is D, I need the eigenvalues of D to be the same as the eigenvalues of A. So what do I do? I compute the eigenvalues of A, and I find my matrix D by putting those eigenvalues on the diagonal. So the D matrix should uh, consist of the lambdas uh, of A. So that is how we find matrix D. Then we are left with the matrix V. How on earth are we going to find this P? Just by this trying as we did uh, before, that's, as you know from the example, that's quite a lot of work. Fortunately it can be done a bit easier, as you will see here. Let's say P consists of the columns W1 and W2, and let's indicate them by the components W1x, W1y for the first uh, column, 2x, W2y for the second column vector of P. And now you see, by the way, why we do this in a 2 by 2 case, because for larger matrices this would become a lot larger. But the idea is exactly the same. Let me compute A times P. Well, that's the easy one. We can use the definition of matrix times matrix. P consists of W1 and W2. So uh, we get A times W1 and A times W2 as the columns of A times P. But what about P times D? Well, that's a kind of mess. P times D, we just have to write down fully what P is and what D is, and then we compute the product as the row. Column rule, as usual, W1x times lambda 1 over here, plus 0, and then lambda 1 times wy over here plus 0, and then 0 plus lambda 2 times w2 comma x over there, and 0 plus lambda 2 times w2 comma y over there. And I may see something nice. Here we have exactly lambda 1 times w1, and on the second column we have exactly lambda 2 times w2. So what do we see? P times D has to be the same as A times B, so that means that we need A times W1 equals lambda 1 times W1, and A times W2 equals lambda 2 times W2. But that means that over here, well, well we know for which factors this holds. That means that W1 has to be the eigenvector of A belonging to lambda 1, and it means that W2 has to be an eigenvector belonging to A corresponding to lambda 2. So, when can we do this trick? Well, a square matrix is invertible if and only if we have enough columns of P. 
Well, P has to be invertible, which means that what is needed is n independent eigenvectors. Because only if I have enough independent eigenvectors, I can do this trick and I can form this matrix P. So if you have n independent eigenvectors, we can form the P. And if you don't have enough, you cannot find an invertible P. So it's if and only if. How do you form the P? Well, you just put the eigenvectors all inside the P, and you put the corresponding eigenvalues on the diagonal of D. So that is how you can find a diagonalization of A, find the eigenvalues of A, find the corresponding eigenvectors. If you have enough eigenvectors, you can find P and D and I. A is diagonalizable. And if you don't have enough eigenvectors, independent eigenvectors, then, you, then your A is not diagonalizable.